is what asexual looks like. Is that what you had in mind? If not, ask yourself, what did you have in mind? I've been told repeatedly that I can't possibly be asexual because of how I look and come across. I've been told that I don't fit the preconceived ideas about how an asexual person is supposed to be. That made me think a lot about where these ideas come from and what I could do to change them as an activist. It's probably worth mentioning that asexuality means experiencing little to no sexual attraction depending on where you fall on the spectrum. It's not to be confused with never experiencing romantic attraction, having no libido, not being able to experience sexual arousal, or being celibate. The fact that I constantly have to explain what asexuality is, even to an educated TEDx audience in 2021, is a testament to what I'm going to be talking about. There is a serious lack of asexual representation in mainstream culture, and it has impacted me my entire life. I grew up never seeing myself represented. Even now, at a time where it feels like sexuality is everywhere and our perspectives of sexuality are increasingly diverse, asexuality is still left out of the conversation. I can count the number of times a mainstream character actually says they're asexual on one hand. Maybe half of one hand. And if we're talking about black characters, then nothing. Guaranteed, if you ask any asexual person who their favorite asexual character is, then they're going to say Todd from the now cancelled Bojack Horseman. Because he's kind of all we've got. Even in Netflix's Sex Education, a multi-season show literally based around representing different sexualities, the asexual character got a whole four minutes of screen time, and you know that every asexual person has been said in that clip. Note that I said clip, not episode. Most of the time, asexuality is just a fleeting reference, the butt of a joke, or a negative trait in a character that's either evil, robotic, alien, or just infantile and strange. A lack of sexual attraction is often treated as a manifestation of a lack of empathy. Think your Lord Voldemort, your Sheldon Cooper, your Data from Star Trek. It's something that might be fixed when the character becomes more likable or more human especially for women, is seen as being a symptom of their prudishness, unattractiveness, or uptight personality, which needs to be resolved by the end of the plot so they can experience the richness of life as complete, appealing, lovable people. Even our non-fiction portrayals are tainted with a perpetual woe-is-them narrative, where we're treated as these unusual, newly discovered creatures struggling to function in today's world. It's something I've experienced firsthand working in the media, they don't want to see you too happy or too empowered. They'd rather see you broken. That is, if they want to see you at all. When you consider our invisibility in any other aspect of mainstream culture, whether it be social policy or sex education, and the way we've been medicalized and pathologized the way many other queer identities have been, it's no wonder that people don't really know what asexuality is. Some might say that invisibility isn't much of a problem, but at this point in time, it's more than that. What the asexual community experiences is more akin to symbolic annihilation. It's a term coined by George Gerbner in the 1970s to describe an absence of representation, underrepresentation, or misrepresentation in the media. It's a way of maintaining social inequality and bringing the legitimacy of an identity into question. It's a form of subtle violence that is often used against sexual minorities and has been suffocating the asexual community since long before my time. Just because the asexual community isn't acknowledged enough to be hated on such a blatant scale as some other identities, that doesn't mean that discrimination and prejudice towards us doesn't exist. A lot of that is influenced by media representation and the rigid way that sexuality is framed as being the ultimate component of emotional fulfillment, health, intimacy, and personal liberation. The narratives perpetuated by the media feed into the way asexual people are treated in real life. Many are quick to assume that you're somehow mistaken about your own identity and that they know more about it than you do. You just haven't found the right person yet, you have a mental or physical disorder, you're just a cold-hearted psychopath, you think you're too good for anybody, you're just anti-sex or celibate, you're using it as a cover for some kind of hidden perversion. These are things that asexual people hear unfortunately often. It doesn't matter that there are asexual people who have actually found their soulmate. It doesn't matter that love can manifest in ways that aren't sexual while still being equally valid. It doesn't matter that there's no evidence to suggest that asexual people have any kind of hormone deficiency, 
or that the prevalence of anxiety and depression in our community is probably more down to our alienation than our sexual orientation. It doesn't matter that our community has diverse feelings towards sexuality and varying degrees of participation in sexuality or that we're just normal people. Because you don't see us, and the way we're taught to understand sexuality and intimacy is narrow, exclusionary, and outdated. There is no one way to be asexual. There is no asexual look. Asexuality looks like me, and you, and your mom, and your dad, and your grandparent, and your kid, and your teacher, and your best friend, and your lover. It could look like anyone because we could be anyone. Asexuality has been called the invisible orientation, but we're done being invisible. Can you see me now?